Welcome to the YouTube channel H2O Chemistry India US. So in this video we are going to talk about the processes involved during the metallurgy. So in the last video we have seen the topic called the metallurgy, the terminology used in the metallurgy processes. So to continue with that, let me start with the processes involved in the during metallurgy. Now the first process involved in the metallurgy process is dressing of ore. Okay, what is called dressing of ore? This process involves three sub-processes we call hand picking, grinding and crushing of ore and pulverization of ore. So what is called hand picking? It's just a manual process removing the large impurities from the ore. So let's, let's look at this picture. We can easily remove the impurities. It's like just like a uh, removing sand from the rice. So that is the idea. Now let's come to the next one, grinding and crushing. So you could see it's a very simple idea. The large stones or rocks are grinded and uh, to make a small stones like this. You could see the large stones are feeded in the machine and then it's, uh, it's grinded to form a small stones. And then further to grind that, you can see in this picture, the small stones are allowed to the uh, wheels so that that will convert into very small stones. So then this picture shows that the gold ores are grinded like this because we don't want to waste any uh, single uh, gram of gold. So we have to um, grind in such a process. So this is a separate one to find the gold to grind the gold ore alone. The next process is called, so this is called crushing, so this is called grinding. The next process is called pulverization. What do you mean by pulverization? Making of ore into a fine powder, right? To do a separation of metal easier. Yes, so from the ore, the extraction of metal should be easier and the chemical reactivity of a substance should be easier. For that we are making into fine powders. So this process is called pulverization. So you could see here the large stones coming into smallest one again coming into very small fine powders. This process we call pulverization. So in the dressing of ore we have a three different processes hand picking, grinding and crushing of ore and pulverization of ore. Come to the second process. This is called concentration of ore. What do you mean by concentration? So after just removing the impurities, it's called concentration method. What do you call removing the impurities? Very simple. Let us take uh, uh, the ore which we get it from the earth crust as a 60% impurities, 60% impurities, and a 40% of uh, um, ore. That means what the metal we want to extract. Whereas after doing this concentration method, the ores majorly has gone out, right? So, purely now, most probably about 90% we have metallic substances. That means our ore, the 10% associated with the impurities. So now, we have increased the percentage from 40 to 90%. So 40, earlier it was, now it is 90%. So the ore concentration is more. So that is why this process is called concentration of ore. Okay, so this, depending upon the principle, depending upon the type of ore, many processes are carried out. Among that, I have discussed four processes here. The first process is called electromagnetic separation or magnetic separation. In this case, the ore or a ganges magnet, we use this method. So, we allow um, the ore into the feeder and then it passes through the magnetic roller. So, if it is a magnet, the magnetic particle present in the ore is attracted towards it and then collected separately as a heap here. Non-magnetic particles we can separate here. So, in this manner we can easily separate this. The next process is called gravity separation or hydraulic method that is called Wilflade table. This mainly 
uh, applicable. Now this this method is having the principle of difference in the densities. That means the gang is very lighter than the ore. So this is we call heft. So when you pass the um, stream of water, a current of water, so when you allow the ore into this, all the heavy particles will settle down here, whereas the lighter particle, gang particle, washed away. The lighter gang particle washed away. So that in that manner we can prepare, we can get the concentrated ore. The next process is called fourth flotation method. This method is mainly sub applicable for sulphide ores. So this is a very important one mark too. So for sulphide ores, which method do you ap uh, apply for the concentration of ore? The answer is fourth flotation method. So here what we do is, in this we will take water, oil and then the sulphide ore and then we allow the jet of uh, air into this. So we will, we will pass the compressed air into this so that the fourth will generate that will float on the uh, top. So you can see here the uh, fourth is coming okay on the top. So it will be connected in a separate pipe. So you can see here separately we can connect. So this we will discuss in a detailed manner in our next video. Now this is just an idea. Fourth means just a foam. Remember it's the foam. The next is chemical or leaching. So the extraction of gold normally done like this. So you could see here it will keep uh, the ore is kept like a heap here. So they will pass a leach solution so that the ore particles separately uh, collected as a liquid and uh, the uh, liquids leaching solutions that will be okay collected separate. So this is how we can uh, uh, drain the ores normally. This is we call chemical method because we used to add some chemicals to remove the metals. So we remove the metal ores, metallic ores. So that is the idea my dear children. Now let us come to the next process, third one, conversion of concentrated ore into metallic oxides or desired compound. So usually the concentrated ore is converted into metallic oxides by two methods. The one is called roasting, another one is called calcination. This is very important to mark what is meant by roasting and what is meant by calcination or they will ask like this what is the difference between roasting and calcination. So in this video I will cover this to mark clearly. So what is called roasting? Look at this picture. This is our day to day life you might have seen. The ground nets are roasted in the sand bot. Right? So this is the exact thing happening in the roasting process. The ore is heated in the presence of excess of oxygen like this. The ore is allowed here. There is a tubers. The tubers is nothing but air pipes. The compressed air is passed through the tubers so that air is blown into the ore and then it heats it so that air will, the ore is burned or is heated in the presence of excess of oxygen. So what actually happens? Now, the sulphide ores, right, normally heated by this method. So let us take this sulphide, zinc sulphide. Zinc sulphide, when you oh, heat with oxygen, the sulfur and oxygen present in it will react together, will form sulfur dioxide. The zinc and oxygen will react together to form a zinc oxide. So what you have understood, the sulfur we want to remove from the zinc sulphide. So sulfur it ores are mainly concentrated or else uh, converted to metallic oxides by roasting methods. You could see here zinc sulphide reacts with uh, oxygen to form a zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide. So here sulphide ore is converted into oxide ore. You can see here. Similarly, the cuprous sulphide then reacts with oxygen and heated with oxygen. It forms cuprous oxide and sulfur dioxide. So roasting process mainly carried out for sulphide ores. Right? So heating of ore in the presence of air or excess of air or excess of oxygen is called roasting process. It's just like uh, roasting the ground nets in the sand bath. Right? So this is an idea. Sulfur dioxide gas is produced along with the metallic oxides. This we know. Examples, pyrite and uh, charcosite are the examples. You can see the reaction here. Next is calcination. Just opposite process. Here we have supplied excess of oxygen. Here we have to, we have not to supply any oxygen or air. Ore is heated in 
the absence or limited supply of air is called calcination. So in this method only employed to the carbonate. So you might have seen the manufacturing of lime, right? Then we are a very lengthy uh, building like, okay? So in this, they will add limestone on the top and they will heat it with the fuel in here so that the air will not go inside. Here the limestone is heated in the absence of air because no air can enter here as well as here. So the limestone is heated. What is the formula for limestone? CaCO3, right? CaCO3. What happens? The CaCO3 gets heated and it liberates carbon dioxide in the exhaust fan. Carbon dioxide will go in the exhaust fan, right? The remaining will be available as a calcium oxide. So that will settle down at the bottom. So this is an idea, my dear children. So heating of ore in the absence of air is called calcination or limited supply of air is called uh, calcination. So this method gem generally employed for uh, carbonate ores because carbonate, if you heat it, it will convert it into oxides and with the liberation of carbon dioxide, with the liberation of carbon dioxide. Here, carbon dioxide is formed along with the metallic oxide, whereas in roasting, sulfur dioxide is formed, whereas here, carbon dioxide is formed along with the metal oxide. That is a clear idea, my dear children. So now you know what is the meant by roasting and calcination. Roasting means heating of the ore in the presence of oxygen. Calcination means heating of the ore in the absence of oxygen. Uh, so here sulfate ores are employed, here carbonate ores are employed. Right, here sulfur dioxide gas is liberated, here carbon dioxide gas is liberated. That is an idea, my dear children. So I hope this uh, difference between this roasting and calcination is uh, clear now. Let us go to the fourth process. So we have converted the metal into metallic oxide. So we have to convert the metallic oxide into metal. That is our fourth process. So extraction of metal from its metal oxide. So how do you do it? Normally we know that what is called reduction. Reduction means removal of oxygen. So I told you metal oxide. So metal oxide, let us take M is a metal, O is oxygen. This is a metal oxide. When I treat with, I want to remove this oxygen. So when I remove this oxygen, I will get metal. So what I can do, removing of oxygen is nothing but reduction process. So this process is nothing but reduction process. So extraction of metal from its metal oxide is nothing but a reduction process because we remove oxygen from this, which involves the suitable reducing agents. What do you mean by reducing agents? These are the substances which carried out the reduction process or which removes the oxygen from the other substances. For example, the reducing agents such as coke, nothing but carbon. Coke is nothing but carbon. Next is carbon monoxide, hydrogen, electricity. We use these methods or aluminothermic process. We add aluminum. If the, if the uh, metallic oxide is less in reactivity, the aluminum is, uh, will be added. So that aluminum will replace the word metal. So like that, no, we will add it. So there will be another process called aluminothermic process too. Uh, the first, process, first substance as a reducing agent we add is coke, mm. carbon monoxide is second one, hydrogen, electricity, all this we use. The first one we will see, a zinc oxide, once we convert the, um, in the uh, roasting process, zinc oxide, how it is converted into zinc? So when we add a coke to this, after heating what happens, the oxygen and the carbon reacts to form carbon monoxide and zinc is reduced. Zinc is reduced. Similarly, when the carbon monoxide is added to the iron oxide, the carbon monoxide removes oxygen from iron oxide to form iron. So this process is called reduction. So extraction of metal from its metal oxide is called reduction process. Whatever we get uh, from this process, the metal is not in the pure form. So we call it as a crude metal. So crude metal has some impurities. So we want to uh, purify it. So our next process is purification process. The purification otherwise called refining of metal, crude metal. What do you call crude metal? It has some impurities, so we call crude metal. So it is not 100% pure, right? So refining, you might have come across refined oil. So what they have to, so after extracting oil, they remove certain uh, impurities to get a pure oil that's called refining of oil. Here, uh, some impurities associated with the metal that is called crude metal. So we want to remove that small impurities. So that is we call refining of crude metal. So this is the metal employed. Distillation or liquidation. Distillation method we know very well. We already learned in our 9th standard. 
heating the uh, metal and converting into liquids and then converting into vapors. So this is mainly involved a difference in the boiling point, right? Distillation mainly mainly involves a difference in the boiling point. So uh, once this uh, mercury-like metals will easily evaporate, so that after evaporate it will cool down and then the mercury will be collected in a separate container. So this is another idea. And let, next is called liquidation. So we have to convert the uh, uh, metal crude ores into liquids and then uh, the same thing, it will allow into the sloping hut, sloping hut so that impurities will be left in, behind in the hut. The pure metal alone will be flowing down to the separate uh, container so we can collect the data. So this is called liquidation. The next process is called pooling. Pooling is nothing but uh, this is mainly uh, applied for the um, copper oxide, uh, cuprous uh, oxide. Okay, for this uh, we, we used to uh, supply the apply this process. So what we do is the green wooden stick we used to. Generally, it is a bamboo. So what we do, we just make the molten uh, copper into this, right? There are some cuprous oxide in here. So the molten copper metal is here there is some cuprous oxide so when the um, when we heat this when we heat this mixture what happens the bamboo sticks will liberate the wood gas wood gas so the wood gas reacts with the sulfur and reacts with oxygen and uh, um, and convert the uh, cuprous oxide into copper so this is the idea behind this uh, Pooling method. Next, come to oxidation. We know very well addition of oxygen is an oxidation process. So by this we get a, a metal. This is mainly employed for the extraction of iron. And then electrolytic process. So we take an anode and a cathode. So anode normally an impure impure copper. Cathode is always a pure copper. So this is an idea, my dear children. This is an idea. This is an idea, my dear children. Uh, impure copper. So when you so pass electricity to this. What happens? The uh, impure copper uh, slowly uh, dissolves in the solution and then it will, will deposit in the cathode. So pure ca copper is deposited in the cathode. So the metal we want to purify, we have to take it as an anode, which is an impure metal or crude metal. So the uh, pure metal is taken as a cathode. So when you pass electricity and we have to take an electrolyte solution too, so this solution normally contains the same ions so that the negative ion will extract the positive metals from this and then keep deposit in the cathode. In this way we get a pure metal. So this is another process. These are the five different processes involved in the uh, uh, metallurgical process to extract the metal uh, from metal ore. The next is, this is an outer layer, we can say mind map of the metallurgical process. The first process is uh, uh, dressing of ore. The second process is called uh, the concentration of ore. Here, physical method, magnetic separation, hydraulic washing, force flotation, chemical method is bleaching. The next process is called conversion of concentrated ore to oxide, metallic oxide. This we can done by roasting or calcination. The next process is reduction of the oxide to metal. So here we can apply heat, carbon, carbon monoxide, aluminothermic process, electrolysis, hydrogen we can add. The last process is called refining of metal. This we can done by liquidation, distillation, electrolysis, pulling, right? So these are the idea my dear children. I hope uh, the process involved in the metallurgy will be very easy to learn. Keep learning. That's a very good idea my dear children. If you like this video, subscribe and click the bell button to get the notification instantly.